Win the prize. In a carnival booth, you can win a stuffed giraffe if you toss a quarter into a small dish. The dish is on a shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand and is a horizontal distance of 2.1 meters from this point. You can see the figure. So here is the dish. So we're tossing uh, a quarter and if it makes it to this uh, dish, we will win the giraffe. If you toss the coin with a velocity of 6.4 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal, as you can see here, the coin will land in the dish. Ignore air resistance. Part A. What is the height of the shelf above the point where the quarter leaves your hand? So that's this distance. And what is the vertical component of the velocity of the quarter just before it lands in the dish? Okay, so uh, we throw this uh, quarter at an initial velocity 6.4 meters per second, making 60 degree angle with the horizontal. The range of the uh, projectile is 2.1 meters, that's x sub t, what I call x sub t. h is the distance between the point, uh, the level where we uh, basically toss the quarter and the, the, the level where the dish sits and it's going to make it into the dish. So I'm going to start with uh, noting that uh, we, we have an initial velocity x component v0x is equal to uh, 6.4 cosine 60 which is uh, roughly 3.2 meters per second. And there is no acceleration on the x-axis. Ax is 0 meters per second square. The y component of the initial velocity, v0y, is 6.4 sine 60, uh, which is roughly 5.5 uh, meters per second. On the y-axis we have the gravitational acceleration minus 9.8 meters per second square. So you can see I have set up my x and y uh, axes here. So I, I, I have this uh, coin uh, subject to gravitational acceleration g throughout the projectile. So uh, let's analyze the uh, motion on the x-axis to start with. So on the x-axis we have a distance traveled delta x, uh, the displacement is equal to uh, the initial velocity x component v0x times delta t which is my range x sub t that is 2.1 uh, meters. And the velocity as a function of time on the x-axis is uh, the initial velocity x component since there is no acceleration. So I can calculate from this the time of flight delta t to be 2.1 uh, meters divided by uh, 3.2 meters per second. Um, so that gives me roughly 0 0.66 seconds uh, for the time of flight. So that's for the time of uh, the time the the coin will spend in the air. Now, as for the y component, uh, we can look at uh, v y as a function of time. So v uh, y is going to uh, depend on time, and uh, at time delta t, at the time of flight, it will be equal to uh, it's uh, initial velocity y component uh, minus uh, g delta t. Okay. So it will be v0 y minus uh, 
minus g uh, delta t. So this will be equal to uh, 6.4 uh, sine 60 uh, minus uh, 9.8 delta t. And uh, I can calculate from this the distance traveled on the y-axis, uh, delta y, will be equal to the integral from uh, 0 to uh, t, so that's as a function of time, uh, by of uh, t dt. So this will be equal to uh, 6.4 uh, sine 60 times t uh, minus 9.8 over 2 t squared. Okay, so uh, with that information, I can start uh, calculating the height of the dish above the level where the, uh, the coin was tossed. So uh, that is the value of delta y, distance I travel on the y-axis, at time delta t, the time of flight, it will be equal to uh, 6.4 sine 60 uh, times uh, delta t which is 2.1 divided by 3.2 uh, minus 9.8 over 2 that is 4.9 uh, delta t square which is 2.1 over 3.2 uh, parentheses squared and this will be equal to uh, 1.5 meters Okay, and as for part B of the problem, I want to know the velocity, final velocity y component uh, when the uh, coin reaches the dish. Uh, now I can write Vy at uh, del time delta t. Uh, this is going to be equal to, uh, using basically I'm using this equation here it will be equal to uh, 6.4 sine 60 minus uh, 9.8 uh, times delta t, which is 2.1 over uh, 3.2. And this turns out to be minus 0. 8, 9 uh, meters per second. Okay, or I can write this as uh, Vy of uh, Vy velocity, Y component at time delta t as a vector. This can be written uh, as minus 0 0.89 j hat in meters per second. So there are two ways to uh, express this answer. Okay, so let's summarize what we did here. We are in a carnival booth. Uh, we're trying to win this stuffed giraffe by tossing a quarter into this dish which is at a, a distance h from the level where we toss the coin. Um, it's at a distance 2.1 meters from uh, where it is tossed, a uh, horizontal distance, and the initial velocity of the coin is 6.4 meters per second, making 60 degree angle with the horizontal. So we know that if we do it this way, it will make it to the dish. So we want to know the height of the dish 
and the vertical component of the velocity as it reaches the dish. So uh, this is our setup. The range of the motion is 2.1 meters. The velocity the x component as a function of time is v0x because there is no acceleration on the x-axis and v0x is 6.4 cosine 60. And uh, from this information, because the range is 2.1 meters, v0x times delta t is equal to the range, so the time of flight we can calculate 0.66 seconds. Um, the y component changes with time because it is subject to this gravitational acceleration. V0y minus g delta t is its value at time delta t. And the distance we travel delta y is integral from 0 to t, vy of t dt, which is 6.4 sine 60 t minus 9.8 over 2 t squared. So if we evaluate this delta y at time delta t, uh, starting from y is equal to 0, so basically we're calling this uh, y is equal to 0, the origin here. Uh, we can calculate uh, this delta y by substituting our time of flight into this equation for delta y as a function of t to be 1.5 meters. If we evaluate uh, y component of the velocity at time delta t, as you can see here, 6.4 sine 60 minus 9.8 times time of flight, where it basically gives us minus 0 0.89 meters per second or minus 0 0.89 j hat uh, meters per second for the uh, y component uh, of the velocity.